Why the majority of young people fail early morning driving tests? A scientific explanation doesn't surprise those who experience the inability to access their mental faculties if they are usually not awake at that particular time. The answer to why many young people fail driving tests in the early morning hours is inadequate sleep days leading to the test, particularly the night before the actual driving assessment. My name is Stephen, I'm the owner of Driving School WA. I coached thousands of learner drivers in the past 20 years and I speak to people who call me for advice on this topic almost every single day. In the last couple of weeks, I spoke to five young people who failed their assessment despite driving almost perfectly during their practice session. It turns out that the only significant difference was the amount of healthy sleep they had before the practice sessions versus driving assessment. Most of their driving lessons took place at the time of the day when they would usually be awake whereas driving tests were either 7.05 a.m or 7.55 in the morning. These five young people who were unsuccessful in passing their driving tests more than twice each had near identical experience. They all had early morning test bookings and poor night's sleep, some as little as three hours of sleep the night before. Early morning driving test bookings may suit and benefit the system that allocates those bookings but not necessarily young developing brains, according to the science. I witnessed this problem while teaching full-time on several occasions and recent conversation with these candidates I mentioned earlier prompted me to create this self-help driving test video. The best possible course of action to avoid driving test failure due to fatigue is to either book an afternoon test time or continue watching this video if morning is the only solution for you. Tiredness is one of the major causes of fatal road crashes and according to experts can be as dangerous as driving under the influence of alcohol. If a driver hasn't had enough sleep or if they're driving when they would usually be asleep, sleepiness becomes a risk factor that compromises safety even for the most experienced drivers. The inability to execute tasks due to lack of presence of mind amplifies when a driver is inexperienced. So if you want to optimize your chances of succeeding at your next driving test by trying these simple five steps, unless you can change the appointment time, that's in keeping with your sleep cycle and when your brain is operating at its full capacity. So if possible, take these five steps 24 hours before the actual driving assessment. Number one, avoid caffeine at least 24 hours prior, excluding the time you wake up in the morning. Number two is avoid energy drinks, especially in the evening hours before bad time. Number three, avoid screen time after the sun sets. If you have to use any devices or you know, gadgets that uh, emit blue light, try wearing blue light blocking glasses. I use them often you know, and I can, I can tell that they work because often if I've spent a lot of hours in front of my screen and if I go to bed I don't have a problem falling asleep. These blue light blocking glasses are not expensive. You can check them in the link below. Number four, go to bed early enough. You have at least seven hours of sleep and wake up at least about a couple of hours before your appointment. And number five, if you can't fall asleep, consider taking a melatonin supplement, which is not a sleeping pill or anything like that. It will not make you drowsy. It's a natural supplement. Speak to your GP just in case if, you're, if you have concerns about it. Melatonin is a natural supplement that affects your circadian rhythm, which is your sleep clock. To the best of my knowledge and experience, this supplement is safe and it's recommended for a short time only. It's suitable for jet lag as your body clock is still synced to your original time zone when you're traveling. Pilots use it. High profile athletes and musicians when on tour, they use it too. I've used it several times. You can buy it over the counter or get a prescription from your GP. So most people who took my advice performed considerably better if they took an early morning test. I have to mention that this is not advice for underprepared candidates. To pass a driving test, you have to be familiar with procedures, and your driving instructor or your private supervisor should be confident that you can 
pass your driving assessment before you go for it. So if you're underprepared, it's not going to matter what time and which day you're taking a driving test. According to scientific research, back to sleep and, and benefits of sleep, teenagers shouldn't be awake as early as 5 or 6 a.m. The education system around the world benefits from having teenagers up early in the morning, but it doesn't help According to the science again, it doesn't help young developing brain. I recently read the international bestseller written by Matthew Walker, professor of neuroscience and psychology at the University of California, titled Why We Sleep. It's a fantastic book. I highly recommend it. It's a great read and I implemented a lot of stuff myself. It's an eye-opener. Check it out in the link below in the description. It's a masterpiece. You know, if you're interested to know further about this subject, you know, it is definitely a masterpiece worth reading. So if I can reinterpret these remarks by Professor Walker and direct them to the subject I'm talking about here, early morning driving test appointments benefit the Department of Transport and its management here in Western Australia, but the vast majority of driving test candidates are teenagers who apparently shouldn't be awake at 6 or 7 a.m. in the morning, particularly if they haven't had good night's sleep. If you're wondering how does it benefit the uh, Department of Transport, well, it benefits them because they don't have to pay any extra to their staff for working over time. And as a result, teenagers must get up so early after inadequate night's sleep to try and perform well and, and you know, pass their driving assessment. By the way, most European countries have compulsory night driving tests and high speed manoeuvring assessments such as you know, freeways or highways. In Germany you've got Autobahn which can even drive up to, I don't know, 200 kilometres an hour, as, as fast as your car can go really. So sadly here in Australia we don't have those mandatory tests for, you know, for novice drivers. I want to go through some of the essential aspects briefly of why these five steps work in most cases if a candidate can drive well but can't implement their skills efficiently in the early morning hours. According to the findings by Professor Walker, caffeine is a psychedelic chemical substance that suppresses your natural release of melatonin. So by the way, melatonin is released by your body, but you know, if you trick it into thinking it's a daytime, it's going to be late. So you're going to have to be laying in bed for six hours before you actually realize it's time to sleep. So long exposure to, you know, to the blue light and, uh, you know, caffeine can prolong the release of your natural melatonin. More importantly, 50% of the caffeine you ingest remains in your system 12 hours after consuming it. Some people claim they can sleep, you know, they can fall asleep and remain asleep if they drink a lot of coffee, but the research suggests otherwise. Those people with a lot of caffeine in their system will never reach the deep cycle of sleep which is the most crucial part of the proper recovery of your cells which is you know when your brain gets to the stage so it can operate at its full capacity so in conclusion if you follow these simple five steps or most of them you'll be putting your skills implementation center on steroids everyone that I worked with reports that it works miracles give it a try you know it can't do any harm let me know your thoughts feel free to share your experience thank you for watching smash the like button consider subscribing if you haven't done that already and whatever you do drive safely